Amen, amen, amen. Hey, viewers, thank you for tuning in today to See the Impossible Faith Center. Boy, I tell you, we have an extraordinary teaching for you. The Lord is uh, preparing us to take us to the next level. And that next level is a place of grace. Grace is the place where we need to be. With grace, everything is easy. With grace, you can flow. Do you know what grace is? Grace is translated on merit favor. Favor. You can't work for grace. You, you, can't, you, you, you can't accumulate money for grace. Grace is a gift from God. And we're going to get into this teaching on grace. Now, the title of it, before we go to the throne, I'm going to give it to you because the Lord said, give him the title before you even take him to my throne. The title of this message for this month, this series, is Had Enough? Had Enough? Yield to Grace. Had Enough? Yield to Grace. Grace will help you run the race. Amen? And I'll teach you that in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. All right. So let's bow our heads and close our eyes and put our mind on the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. She can say any way she wants. Praise God. Gracious Father, we come before you in the name of your son Jesus. Lord, I pray that today your people will open up their ears, spiritually that is, and hear what you have to say to them. Father, let's take them out of that place where they're not producing, Father. That's what you said that you're going to do through this teaching. And you're going to show them their identity, who they are in Christ. You're going to show them how to be strong in you, Lord. And you're going to also show them how to get to the wealthy place that is surrounded by grace. Praise the Lord. Father God, we pray this in the wonderful name of your son Jesus and all God's people here and out there, viewers. Just, just agree with me by saying amen. Amen. It is our custom at Seeing the Impossible Faith Center to give God, Father God, a praise through our applause. Let's do that. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, the website's coming out pretty good. I want you to go on the website and you can see some new things that are happening. And um, I will be giving the deacons and, uh, and the reverends assignments to give me essays so I can put on the website, all right? Because you are leaders, you're elders in this church, amen? And I want you to be able to um, uh, express the Jesus in you to a, a world that is dying because they don't have a Savior. Praise the Lord, amen? So is that time to start evangelizing, even if we can't get out there, you know, uh, because in the part of Florida where we live, it's pretty hot, and you will melt, you know, it's too hot, too hot. And we're up north, it's too cold, too cold. But the powerful thing about the tool of the Internet is that we can evangelize through the Internet. Everybody's on the Internet. and YouTube, Facebook, Google+, Plus, LinkedIn, you name it, it's out there. We can do it through there, all right? And also, by visiting other places, as long as God gives us the assignment to do it, then we go out and do it in Jesus' name. But meanwhile, open up our journals right now. Let's do that. Open up your journals. Praise the Lord. And remember, the title of today is Yield. Had enough? Yield to grace. You had enough? Yield to grace. If you had enough, then yield to grace. Okay? Well, how do I yield? Well, that means I turn over everything to, to grace. I stop doing it on my own will, my own power, my own understanding, which has brought me nothing, nothing, <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing. But grace is a gift from God, and, and the body of Christ needs to learn how to yield to grace. That's, that's just it, you know. There's no other way. So let's go to Hebrews 4.16, and, and we'll make Hebrews 4.16 our primary scripture. Carissa, it's good to see you, honey. Nice to see you. I know you've been making a lot of money. I can tell. <laughs> I can feel it from here, honey. Praise the Lord. Hey, Amen. You look beautiful, sweetie. You taking care of mom? Good. Thank you. I know you are. 
There's a lot of people taking care of my daughter. Amen. Especially the gorilla sitting in the back. Amen. He, he taking care of. And I say that with love. Praise the Lord. Well, in Hebrews 4.16, if you're there, all right, um, this statement is very bold, and I love it. I'm going to read it out of two translations, okay? And, and I want you to study this statement. Just don't, just don't, you know, the word, for it to work, it got to get inside of you. If it don't get inside of you, it'll never work, you know? So when you receive this word inside of you, praise God, this word will work for you. Has to go. Has to get inside of you. Has to, has to dwell inside. You got to be able to quote it when you have to quote it. You know what I mean? So that's what you got to do. You know, you got to go. And, and, and you know, we 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 say, well, you know, I got no time. But you no, know, you really, <laughs> you, you you ain't got time to be fooling around and being away from God. You're supposed to be in the presence of God. You're supposed. You know, and, and, and it's a process. I know that. It's a process. That's why you need to come to a place where they teach you the Bible. And, and preaching is one thing and teaching is another. Amen. All right? So if you notice, anytime anybody's behind this pulpit, they're teaching. They're not preaching. All right? Okay. Hebrews 4.16. It says like this. Praise the Lord. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it the most. Grace. I like, I like, the, I like the, the, the King James. It says, let us, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy. Mercy. And find grace. See? Even though grace has been given to you, some of you don't even know you have grace with you. See? So you have to find grace. And I'm going to give you instruction today how to find grace. Because grace is favor. All right? And I want you to start proclaiming favor. Listen, if you're tired, it, like the title says, you had enough, then you the grace. Instead of talking foolishness, and talking wrong things about you in your life and the things that you've gone through, start talking positive. Start calling grace into your life. You want to go to the next level? You want to get work? You want to get um, a currency, money in your pocket? You want good things that your health get right? Start talking right. Yield to grace, okay? It says here, you have to come boldly to the throne of grace. So that means grace dwells in the throne. The throne of grace. See? So what throne have you been searching for lately? The throne of glory or the throne of misery? So we can recondition this today. We can recondition your mind today so that you can start pursuing and and, and qualifying for this grace that your Father in heaven gave you already through, your, through his Son, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. And then it says that we may obtain mercy. Mercy. See? Grace. Mercy. Thank you, Father. How is it go? Mercy. Yes, Lord. When your mercy runs out, mercy keeps you. Grace will take you to another place. See? Mercy, mercy will keep you, but grace will move you to another place. See, that's what I heard, like that. Is that the way you said it to me? You said mercy, see, that's what you said, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. So you said mercy will keep me, but when my mercy runs out, grace will take me to another place. Are you listening to that? So a lot of things that has closed, a lot of doors that's closed for you, it's been because, praise the Lord, grace says it's time for you to move. It's time, to, it's time for you to run another, another race. 
See, there's many races. One life, but many race, many place. Praise the Lord. So if you're so gracious, write this down as a first principle that I like to give you. Grace, and it's very simple but powerful. Grace is the secret to success. Grace. Grace. There are principles that you work and, and it will promote you with grace. Principles that you use, they're, they're scriptures they're, they're, and, and it will promote you. Praise the Lord. You got that? Grace is the secret to success. So we daily should be going to the throne of grace because we obtain mercy there. See what I'm saying? That's where you obtain mercy. And that's where you find grace to help you in the time of... That's what the scripture said. I, I still haven't left Hebrew 4.16. It says, you find grace, you find grace, and grace will help you. Grace, God's gift will help you. God's gift will help you. Are you getting it? In the time of need. So really, you can't do without grace. So grace is the secret to success, right? We agreed upon that? Number two, if you're so gracious to so write this down, grace is the difference. Grace is the difference between your presence and your future. Grace. Grace is the difference between your presence. It, 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 what happens to me right now, if I yield to grace... It, it, it will determine, once again, going back to number one, my success. Grace, favor, man, favor. How many times you haven't received favor and you know you don't deserve it? I don't have enough to pay the light bill. You got to call them up because if you ignore the light bill, they're going to turn it off on you. So you call it up and you say, look, in the middle of the month, I get my check in the beginning or the last, whatever. I'm getting money and I'm be, I'll be able to pay this bill. And, and the person says oh, on the other side, well, you only have a 10-day grace. You know, I've been there. You know, I've been there. Don't, don't, don't judge me because you see me with a little fancy tie on. I've been there. Okay. So, Please, I won't have it in 10 days. I'll have it in 14. Okay, we'll do it this time for you. Out of what? Courtesy. Which is related to what? Grace. See, I want you to understand that grace always comes from God. Grace, anything good comes from God. Anything evil comes from the enemy. Don't let people trick you. Oh, God's letting you go through this so you can learn something. God don't have to make you go through, through bad times so you can learn something. Bad, God can just hold your breath for a few minutes and you'll wake up. And that's it. See? Somebody say amen. amen. So grace is the difference between your presence and your future. Okay? Now watch this. This is very powerful, the statement. Grace does not go to those who need it. Mm, wait a minute, God. Grace does not go to those who need it. And everybody needs grace. Now watch the difference here. Grace does not go to those who need it. Everybody needs grace, Reverend. You know where you know what it does? To those who value it. Grace stays with those who value it. Because grace, watch this. Grace can come towards you and grace can leave you too. Because of your action. You feel me, young man? You feel me? 
Amen. Grace is favor. Grace. What is grace? It's favor. So favor is somebody, you know, like right here, you get in favor. Praise the Lord. You don't even know the person. <laughs> and all of a sudden, okay, I'll help you. All right. That's favor. That's grace. You're the last one online on the, on the, on the Walmart, whatever. Walmart, send me a seat. Praise the Lord. And, and, and all, or Publix, wherever you go shop. And all of a sudden, a cashier opens up. Okay? I'll take the last one online. I'll take the, the last one, and you just fly over there. That's favor. That's favor. That's favor. How many times you haven't gone to a place, and they said, wow, you know what? This, this merchandise is on sale, and today you get an extra 20% off. That's favor. That's favor. That's right. Come on now. See? She knows about grace. Okay? So grace does not go to those who need it. Did you write that down? But to those who value it. See, nothing that you don't value, nothing that you don't respect is going to stay with you. Whatever you respect, you will attract. Are you hearing me? Whatever you disrespect will leave you. That's the way it goes. So if you respect grace, grace will grow and grow and take you to the throne of grace. Grace will take you from level to level. You disrespect grace, praise the Lord, somebody. Grace is going to leave you. See? Because you cannot work hard enough to get everything you deserve. You can. Your, your body physically won't allow you to. <laughs> kind of quiet in here, isn't it? Okay, put on our thinking cap now. Let's not bug out because we're sitting in the pew. Come on, put on your thinking cap. Stay focused. I'll get you out here pretty soon. I promise you. I won't give you too much information because I don't want you to overload, okay? Praise the Lord. You've got to have a passion. You've got to have a passion for your life. You've got to want, have a desire to better your life. And grace will better you. It's a gift from God. You can't work hard enough. You can't work long enough. Are you hearing me? To be debt free. But with grace, my God, you can get debt free. You can owe a bill, and when they look it up in the computer, they say, oh, we can't find this thing. So we're going to give you the credit that you need. We're going we're gonna to help you. Because grace was on your side. Praise the Lord. And that's how it works. Either you're in the, in the pit or you're in the palace. Now, every one of us call, is called to be in the palace. You're not called to be in the pit. The only one called to be in the pit are the pigs. In the dirt, okay? And I remember when, when Jesus got to the other side of the island and, 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 and that man with all those spirits, those demon spirits was on him, he said, can I at least we go into the pigs? And when they went into the pigs, you know what the pigs did? They threw themselves over the cliff because they, they said, we don't want you. We'd rather go to pig heaven than hang out with you. So get rid of the pit. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, get rid of the pit. And get attached to grace. It will change your life radically. Praise the Lord. You cannot work hard enough to get everything you deserve. You can't. It's impossible. And you cannot work long enough to be debt free. You need grace. Praise the Lord. Everything will require grace, favor. That's why it's important for you when you get up, you say, God, in the old school, they used to say, how about a little more grace, Father? Give me a little more grace, Father. Give me a little more grace, Father. See? Grace is something that you have not deserved. Grace is, is something that's been given to you. Now go to Deuteronomy 16. Deuteronomy 16, praise the Lord, somebody. Uh, verse 15, praise God. And, and we're going to see, we're going to see the characteristic of grace. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Praise God. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. That's the fifth book in the Old Testament. 
Go in the old, go go in the beginning, Genesis, and then find count five, and then you'll be there. Je Deuteronomy 16. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm trying to encourage you about grace so then I can teach you about grace so you can learn. Because the difference between those that have something and those that don't have anything is information. See? And we all, at one time, have had nothing. We came with nothing, we leave with nothing. So at least through your journey, you should be getting blessed. You should be walking in a place called joy, love, peace. Praise the Lord. Not stress, heartache, disgusting. I feel disgusting. I can't take this anymore. You got to get rid of those words. Those words are hurting you. Those words are not blessing you. They're hurting you. They're hurting you. So let's start talking right. Let's start doing things right. And let's move on to the next level. Now in... in um, Deuteronomy 16, 15, I have it in the, in the King James, but I want to go there in the New Living Translation also. It says this. Can I read it? For seven days you must celebrate this uh, f uh, fiesta f festival to honor the Lord your God at the place he chooses for. That's a place of grace. For it is he, watch this, for it is he, for it's he who bless you with bountifully harvest and gives you success in all your work. This festival will be time of great joy for all. This is the place of grace. Now watch. There's a reason why I'm reading the New Living Translation. Write this down. Grace is the greatest harvest that you will receive from God. You heard what it said. It said right there, bountiful harvest, and it gives you success. Didn't we say that grace is a success? All right, good. So pastor's just not saying things to say so they can sound nice. Pastor's saying biblical principles. This, this book here is your handbook of life. Praise the Lord. Are you hearing me? So we need to learn how to dissect it. Praise God. I'm not asking you to change your religion. I'm not asking you to change your tradition. I'm asking you to change your information. That's what I'm asking you to do. Because obviously, the old information you have is only taking you so far. New information will take you to where you need to go. Where, and that is a place, he says, that you can celebrate and honor the Lord your God at the place He's chosen. We're in Deuteronomy 16, 15. See, that's the key. He chose a place for you. You've, you've searched many places on your own. But guess what? It hasn't worked. So that's why if you had enough, once again, going back to the title, you had enough, yield to grace. You had enough, yield to grace. Praise the Lord. All right? Don't yield to your feelings and your emotion. Right now, your feeling and your emotion is playing games with you. Playing games with you. You need to take control of your mind, take control of your, of your feelings, take control of your emotion in the name of Jesus, okay? All right. So, as the body of Christ, learn how to yield to grace, then you'll be able to go to the throne of grace. You can't go to a place that you don't know nothing about. It's like you not knowing you're in Florida. If you don't know where you're at, how are you going to go to, uh, let's say, to North Carolina? You know, you know, I, don't know, I don't even know where I'm at. You, know, you got to know where you're at in life so that you'll be able to go to that next level, that next place that God wants to take you to. And you know who's going to escort you there? Grace. Okay? And mercy will keep you. Okay, grace and mercy will go with you everywhere you go. Now, here in the, in the King James, it says, seven days you shall keep it sacred feast to the Lord your God in a place which he, he which, which the Lord chooses. Now watch, this is the key right now. Because the Lord your God, because the Lord your God will bless you. 
bless you, not curse you. The curse, you put it on yourself. You put the curse on yourself. Don't blame it on God. God, has, God is not a God that curse. God has blessed you. Every good thing comes from God. Every, the person right next to you came from God. Praise the Lord. Because the Lord your God will bless you in all your produce and all the work of your hands. See? Your hands. Come on, somebody say, Father, favor my hands. Father, favor my hands. Give me a little more grace. That's right. So everything your hand touches, look, it produces. Everything will produce. Everything you touch, praise the Lord, will increase. Praise the Lord. Everything you touch will multiply. Praise the Lord. Will multiply. I got your back already. I got something for you for next week. That's why I didn't call you, but I got you all set, all set up. See what I'm saying? So that's the way it is. You got to have hands that produce. Don't have hands that are seducing. Because when you seduce, it doesn't last. Manipulating. There ain't no grace there. There's no blessing there. But curse. So say this with me. Father, I decree that everything I touch will produce, multiply, increase in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, you can give my hand. You can clap if you want. Yeah. But the only way your hands are going to produce if you pursue grace. Write this down, please. Pursuing grace Pursuing grace, whose grace? God's grace. And then when you pursue God's grace, God's grace will transfer into you and you'll have grace with man too. In fact, your enemies will be at peace with you because of your grace that come from God. So pursuing grace qualifies you to receive grace. Pursuing grace. You cannot have nothing that you don't pursue. You won't qualify for it. Per, you got it, uh, Deacon Rory? Pursuing grace qualifies you to receive grace. You've heard me say before, the proof of desire is pursue. The proof of desire is pursue. The pr Look, you want something. Man, you'll work, you'll save you do whatever you got. You'll sell cans. <laughs> you do whatever you have to do to get what you want. So when you pursue grace, it qualifies you to receive grace. You have no right to anything you have not pursued. You getting that? If you don't work for it, you don't pursue it, you, don't, you ain't got the right to have it. But a lot of folks and a lot of people, because they don't know any different, they just want hand downs. Hand me down. Hand me down this. Hand me down that. Hand me down. Help me here. Help me there. Well, it comes a time that that, that favor runs out. It runs out. And then you get all upset. Well, you never celebrated it. Okay. You don't have, you don't have, you don't have, you don't have to shout. That's okay. You, you, you never celebrated. You never honored it. Are you, are, you, are you learning something, class? When you honor something, when you celebrate something, when you speak right to it, praise God, and treat it right, it will grow. <laughs> okay. Let's go to James chapter 4, please. James chapter 4, verse 2. And, uh, yeah. We'll read that to help us. Um, yes, follow me. To help us, uh, uh, you know, to help us here with this. Uh, Father, put the word in my mouth in the name of Jesus. With this teaching. Yeah, I heard that. I heard right now. 
if God strengthens your hand, you'll have a new grip. If God will strengthen your hand, you will have a new grip. You'll never have a new grip unless you have strength in your hands. Did you hear that? So ask God to strengthen your hands. God, strengthen my hand. I need a new grip. I need a new grip. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And then he wants you to be careful and watch out that uh, no poisonous root get inside of you. That will kill grace, you know. Poisonous and bitterness grows up to trouble. Poisonous and bitterness. Some of us, some of us, if we don't watch it, will continue drinking from uh, that bitter water. And we have to stay away from the bitter water. Anybody understand what the pastor is saying to you? Stay away from bitter water. Stop being bitter. You can say no and just walk away. You don't have to hold it against the person. Are you listening to me? Just say no and walk away. And, and be filled with grace. Praise the Lord. All right, that's right. Okay, I got to get there. James chapter 4, verse 2. And um, in James, let me see. Let me see here. Mm, mm, mm. James 4, 2 says this. You want what you don't have so you scheme and kill to get it you are jealous of what others have but you can't get it so you fight and wage war to take it away from them yet you don't have what you yet you don't have what you want because you don't Ask God for it. That's the New Living Translation. So you get jealous. You fight. You wage war. You want to take it away from people. Not knowing that what goes around comes around. See? So the key here is you do not have because you do not ask. Okay? That's the key right there. Underline that, please. You have to ask God for grace. To give you more grace. Give me more grace, Father. Give me more grace, Father. Give me more grace, Father. I need grace. I need grace. See? King David knew how to pursue grace. King David had the grace to pursue grace. And when I tell you that's your grace, what I'm saying to you is that's your gift. That's your gift. God's giving you a grace. God's giving you a grace. And you have to recognize, what is my grace? What is my grace? My grace will help me accomplish and complete and fulfill this race. Your life is called a race. And it's not who gets there first or who gets there last. You can't compare yourself with someone else. You have to compare yourself with you. You're not in competition with anybody else. You're in competition with whom? Yourself. That's all you're in competition with. David knew how to ask for grace. Do you want to learn how to ask for grace? Okay, let's go to Psalm 31, verse 16, and I'll show you. If you, if you apply this scripture into your daily prayer, God will, will blow you out of your little stream and put you in the river. Praise the Lord. Okay? You'll stop drinking from the cup of blessing and you start swimming in the river of blessing. Praise the Lord. Psalm 31, verse 16, David teaches us how to pursue grace. Praise the Lord. Very powerful, very powerful scripture. Very powerful scripture. Very powerful scripture. I love it. I get higher for this one. I love it. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Ain't no sleeping in here. Uh-uh. Get out of here with that. Yeah. Ain't my fault. See? That's why you're here. So receive, retain, and release. How do you receive it? 
You receive the word of God, and the word of God will wash you from your filth. From your, from your, uh, I'm going to say this word. Can I teach you like I feel it? From your funkiness. You heard me. In the name of Jesus. Walk around with this funk. You got to get rid of that. Now watch what I'm saying now. I'm not cursing here. F-U-N-K, I said. Okay, now. So be careful. Be careful. If your mind is dirty, you're going to think dirty things. Somebody can't even, no one can't talk in front of you because you go off with it. You're in a place of joking all the time, and I'm in a place of joy and laughter. I love laughter. I love peace and laughter, but you can't, life is not a joke. Life is a serious business. Praise the Lord, somebody. And I love you. That's why I'm talking to you like that. Are you there in Psalm 31, 16? Okay, good. It says, make your face shine upon your servant. This is David. This is a great scripture to ask God, Rory, to shine upon your face. Frank, shine when you're a business. You need new business. You need, you need the business. To Come on. Lord, shine upon the business. Shine upon my house. Shine upon my health. Shine upon my money. See, he said, make your face. See, when the face of God shines upon you, who can come against you? Who and what can come against you? I mean, everywhere you go, you'll have favor and grace. Praise the Lord. When they said, something's different about that man. Something's different about that woman. He said, make your face shine upon your servant. Now watch. Save me for your mercy's sake. See? Some of, some of us need to get saved out of a situation. Some of us need to get saved out of a situation. That situation is our distraction. So because it's our distraction, it becomes our attraction. You feel me? That situation is distracting you, so it's your attraction. See? But you need to be saved from that situation. You need to be delivered from that situation. And the only way you're going to get out, because your pride will hold you, your pride will keep you down. My God. Your pride ain't worth a nickel. Ain't worth a penny. I've never seen anybody get anything through pride. So you must understand that if you ask God's face to shine upon you, my God, he will save you. If his presence is with you, he will save you and give you mercy. Praise the Lord. And that's what I need. I need mercy. That's what you need. You need mercy. Praise the Lord. Now watch. I'm, I'm going to keep on. Let's go to Psalm 34. We're in the book of Psalm. You were in Psalm 31. Now we're going to Psalm 34. A couple of chapters over. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, man. Thank you, God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. What's been attracting? What, what, what's been my distraction? Whatever's been my distraction becomes my attraction. That's how I can focus. Whatever you focus on, that's what you're going to grow. That's where you're going to grow. Don't focus on error. Don't focus on your mistake. You had enough? You to grace. Go to grace. My God. Right now, you know, I know this teaching is kind of, you know, because you're in the wheel, in the powerful wheel. But if I would get myself off and put something up there on the screen that you like, you'll be full focus on it. Okay? Full focus. Because your flesh is, is telling you how to do it. So now you have to teach your, let your spirit teach your flesh. Move out of the way. I'm taking over. I'm taking over. You, well, you know, you ain't going to be a mess the rest of your life. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. You're there, Psalm 34, verse 10. Look what he says. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. That's your key right there. Those who seek the Lord, those who seek the Lord, I hear you, Lord, those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. That's how you ask for grace. Lord, I'm seeking you. Increase my grace. Lord, I'm seeking you. Father, I'm seeking you. See, we can't be so, 
we can't live life in a subconscious state. We just get up, go to work, get up, go to school, just get up. You can't. You have to have a goal. You have to have a plan. You have to have something to look forward to. My plate is so full that I, you know, that I can't get to everything I want to, but I laugh and I say, okay, it's all right. At least I accomplished this. I'll get to that. As soon as I can, I'll get to that. I will accomplish that. And you see, that's why it doesn't bother me. See? But I stay focused. I work on my mind. I work on my spirit. I work on my body. You got to do that. You got to become one. You, listen. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm not telling you go out there and lift weights and all that. I'm saying take a walk. Drink water. Well, I work hard. You don't understand. No, be quiet. You, you get used to your job. If you don't make your body and your spirit and your mind become one, you will leave one behind. You can't leave none of yourself behind. All three of you have to go where you're going. Did you get this key? Stop it. Stop leaving yourself behind. So if you work your body, work your mind, work your spirit. Stay still. Listen. Learn to be in peace. Don't have ants in your pants. Because you're not focused. See? See? Take control of your body. Say, I will still, I'll stay still. I will breathe in through my nose. I will exhale through my mouth. I will have a glass of cold water. Not pop all the time. Not soda all the time. Feeding for that sugar. Somebody give me a fix. I know. I fight it with the cookies. And now everybody laughing because it's on the pastor. My daughter told my wife, don't buy daddy cookie. He's got to lose weight. I said, how dare her? <laughs> I've given up everything else. Why can't I keep I ain't giving up my cookie. <laughs> You don't know. Me and my cookie got a thing going on. <laughs> we got a thing going on. Cookie and pasta love each other. And when I eat that cookie, you know what that cookie tells me? You know you're right. <laughs> Especially if I put a little whipped cream on it. I get high just hearing that. Oh, that's okay. You got yours, I got mine. Everybody got their own. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, now. So what you going to do? What you going to do? You got to leave it alone. Okay? You pursue your grace, I'll pursue mine. So here, the, he says, the young lions lack and suffer hunger. The young lion. Think about what he's saying. I'm not even going to translate it for you. Think about it. The young lack and suffer hunger. But those, see, look at that transformation. But those, that means you could be young, old, wherever you at, if you just switch this sh shift on, them, on, on yourself, shift in your life to that place where you need to be. But those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Watch. Go to Job. Let's go to Job. Watch how Job pursued grace. Let me show you. Job 33, verse 26. Job 33, 26. Praise the Lord. Amen. Job 33, 26. Praise the Lord. Watch. Watch how he does it. Watch how he does it. He does it really neat. Really, really good. He says this. Oh, gosh. I'm excited. I'm excited. Hi, Jonah. Praise the Lord. Hi, Ray. I love you. See, David knew how to pursue grace. Job is teaching us how to pursue grace. Watch, every character in this book, at one time or the other, pursue grace. Pursue grace. Had to. And remember, pursuing grace qualifies you to receive grace. Remember what I said. You have no right to anything you have not pursued. 
If you, the proof of desire is pursue. The proof of desire is pursue. The proof of desire is pursue. 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 What you pursuing? Come on, even in your own selfishness. I was talking about the cookies right now, right? I pursue, I pursue this. I pursue the cookie, right? I'm using this as an example. Why? Because the cookie gives me a sugar rush. Why? Because the cookie make. Are you listening to me? The cookie make me feel good. I like it. It's me and my cookie. Especially when I got that chewy chocolate thing in it. That thing, oh, God. And you know what I like to do? I like to count how many uh, chips, you know, chocolate chips in the cookie. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. You have your own passion. And one, two, and I take, you know, because I know I can't have too many, so I want to enjoy that cookie. So I, has that, you ever done that? I take it out and I chew it real slow. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. And the cookie tells me, the cookie tells me, you know you're right. <laughs> you know you're right. And when the cookie finish, and I'm watching TV by myself, the cookie says, I'm over here. <laughs> Come on. Nobody is seeing. They're watching. Everybody's in their own room. See, I'm in the pulpit. I'm ratting myself out. You've trained so hard. You do so much. That's all you got is your sweet. Are you listening to me? So I have to shift it. I say, no! Enough. I had enough. I had enough. So I don't yield to the cookie anymore. I yield to no. No. I don't know about you, but I've eaten so much cookie, I get high from it. I mean, literally, I'm like, <laughs> it's not a good place to be. So whatever you pursue, the proof of desires pursue. You know, are you understanding? See, some of you are very quiet because you pursue your own sweets. You know, I know you have an affair with your, with your refrigerator. I know you do. You ain't going to look at me like you, like you don't. I know you have an affair with that refrigerator. And you visit your refrigerator more often than you visit your own family. It's you and your refrigerator. Okay? But Job taught us a way how to pursue grace. In Job 33, 26, you're there? He said, he shall pray to God and he will delight in him. He shall see his face with joy for he restores to man his righteousness. Okay? So you got, you got James 4, 2. You'll never get grace if you don't ask for it. You got Psalm 31, 16. You want, you want God's face to shine upon you? So everywhere you go, the door will be open? Because you're going to be accountable to people. People, places, and things. You're going to have to. You don't, pay, you don't pay your bills? Guess what happened? Not a good place to be. You know that. So for you to be able to pay your bills and fulfill your commitment, you need grace. Are you listening to me? You hear what I'm saying, young man? You need grace. Grace will help you run the race. Pride ain't going to help you run it. I know it all. You, man, you, can't, you could be 100 years old and you ain't going to know it all. You're never going to know it all. And a lot of us just are frustrated. And I'm going to teach you, not today, but I'm going to teach you not to frustrate grace. There's a scripture that says, do not frustrate it. Frustrate grace. Don't make it upset with you. You want it near you. You don't want it to go away. Praise the Lord. That's right. There you go. So you got Psalm 34, verse 10, and you have Job 33, verse 26. And your primary scripture here is Hebrew 
4.16. Hebrews 4.16. Praise the Lord. So, here we go. Write this one down, and we'll probably do two more scriptures, and then we'll, we'll close off the shop. Okay? This is another principal key I want to give you. Grace should be pursued. Requested and celebrated. Did you get it? We just read it all through the scriptures. Grace should be pursued. Requested and celebrated. Amen? Requested and celebrated. Requested and celebrated. James 4, 2. You have not, you have not because you have not, you have not, acts not. You have not because you have not, acts not. Sometimes you ask and you don't even know you're asking. And it's good. It helps you out. If you're lonely, I wish I had a companion. See? You're not asking God, but you're, but you're just talking out loud or thinking out loud. You know? That's axing. I wish I had a better job. I wish my leg didn't hurt that much on my back. I wish I could go to the cookie factory every day <laughs> and have any type of cookie I want and it won't affect my health. See? Everything is affecting your health. I got a little genius over there. She's always going to the iPad. Let, let me find out about that, Dad. I buy pills. It has GMO. See? Okay. So a 12-year-old, she told me, Dad, if they don't get you through the cigarette, if they don't get you through the alcohol, if they don't get you through, through the drugs, they'll get you through the food. So, okay? So it's my business, it's your business to stay in grace so you can run this race. Did you write it down? Okay. Now watch. Let's go to Exodus, second book in the, in the Bible. Exodus 33. Exodus 33. Exit. I hear you, Father. I hear you loud and clear. You know your people better than I do. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Amen. Okay, Exodus 33, verse 12. See, he, Moses, we're going to talk about Moses now. Moses understood grace. Moses, not only he understood it, he requested it. <laughs> he requested it and celebrated it. Once again, you got to celebrate what you got. You don't celebrate what you have. Guess what? The gift will leave you. So, Grace can take you to uh, the throne, the throne of grace. There's a place called the throne of grace, according to Hebrews 4.16, right? Now, you can increase in that throne of grace, or you can decrease by your action. Okay? Here we go. So, number 12. One day Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me, take these people up to the promised land, but you haven't told me whom you will send with me. You have told me I know you by name, and I look favorably on you. See, that's grace. Favor is grace. 13. If it is true that you look favorably on me, let me know your ways. Oh, God. So that I may understand you more fully and continue to enjoy your favor. See? Now he's talking about enjoying grace. See? Write that down. I need to learn how to enjoy my grace. I need to learn how to enjoy my grace. Every good thing that you have, that came from grace. So then he says, understood you more fully and continue to enjoy your favor. And remember that this nation is your very own people. 14, please. The Lord replied, I will personally go with you, Moses. That's what, God, that's what God is telling you right now. Everywhere you go, that's what he's telling you. I will go with you. Everywhere you go, I will go with you. 
He says, I will go, I will go, I will give you rest. Everything will be fine for you. God's talking to somebody right now. God is saying he'll be with you. He will give you rest. And he's saying everything will be fine with you. That's three keys right there. If I was in the pew, I would be writing down. When my pastor gets up on the, on the pulpit, when I see him tomorrow night and he gets on the pulpit, I put away everybody around me. I don't think about bills. I don't think about my family. I, I, I'm looking to, to get a word. One word can change my life drastically. God is saying to you today, everyone that is here, those viewers out there, you know what he's saying? He's saying that he will be with you personally, and he says he will give you rest, and he says everything will be fine for you. So stop stressing. God himself is saying, out of, praise the Lord, Exodus 33, verse 14, he's saying that he's going to go with you personally. He said that he will give you rest, and everything is going to be fine with you. 15, then Moses said, if you don't personally go with me, with us, don't make us leave this place. See, Moses is, is losing courage. Moses is like, I, I, I don't know if I belong here anymore. And he says, how will anyone know that you look favorably on me and on me, on your people, if you don't go with us? For you, for your presence among us sets your people and me apart from all other people on earth. Praise the Lord. So when God's presence is on you, it sets you apart from the rest. So stop trying to fit in. When you're not called to fit in, you're called to stand out. Praise the Lord. And that's what he's saying. You won't fit in. You will stand out. I'll make you the head and not the tail. I'll bless you in the city. I'll bless you in the field. If you understand this, yield to my grace. Yield to my grace. Yield to my grace and not your own understanding. Something that you don't know is killing you. So we have to yield to God's grace. Look, Moses know how to do it. Moses understood grace, and he requested it, and he celebrated. Now watch. Come on, we're almost done. Verse 17. Then, I mean, then the Lord replied to Moses, I will indeed do what you have asked, for I look favorably, graciously on you, and I know you by name. Uh, grace is a gift from God. Grace is a gift from God. And when grace is imparted into you, Frank, it will know you by name. Your grace given to you helps you run your race. My grace given to me, Bobby, helped me run my race. Your grace to you. That little dog that you got, that's grace, man. That thing brings joy and happiness into your life. It don't bring the neighbor joy and happiness. It brings you joy. It's been given to you. That little animal know you by name. Oh, man, listen to me, sir. That animal know you by name. And you know that little animal by name. Are you listening to me? Every good thing that you have has been given to you. And grace gave it to you. And when mercy runs out, grace will pull you somewhere else. Grace and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Grace is not an accident. Grace is, you want to write this down? And we're closing up. Grace is not an accident, but a deliberate, deliberate design by God to reward you for acts of obedience. Acts of obedience. You ain't going to have grace if you're disobedient. You're not, you're not, you ain't going to have grace if you're crazy, crazier than a dollar watch. You're not going to have grace if you're cuckoo for Cocoa Puff. Acts of obedience. I got a scripture for you, and I'll give it to you, and that's it. We're going to go home. Uh, I'm preparing for something else, another service after the service. We're going to honor Reverend Judy Justice. See? Grace is not an accident. 
is designed by God. Grace is designed by God to reward you for your acts of obedience. Isaiah 119. Just write it down. If ye are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. If ye are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. And with some translation in King James it says, you shall eat. You shall. That means there's no way out of it. You shall eat. If you sow good seed, you get a good harvest. You sow bad seed, you get a bad harvest. All right? Praise the Lord. Um, I want to talk to the viewers right now that are there. Uh, you heard a lot of principles, and, and I gave you a lot of scriptures today on the topic, Yield to Grace. And uh, the aim was, had enough? You had enough? And yield to grace. I said it before, and I'll say it again. Grace is a gift from God. Grace. You want to know really what grace is? Grace is proof of the love of God. That's what grace is. Grace is proof of the love of God. You got love in your life? Don't say you don't have love in your life. Because you do have love in your life. You just don't recognize it. See? Start requesting. Start pursuing. Start requesting. Start pursuing. How do you pursue when I request? And then when it comes to you, celebrate it. So three things you're going to do. Pursue, request, and celebrate. Are you listening to me? Pursue, request, and celebrate. Grace is the proof of love from God. God loved you so much, he gave you grace. Jesus Christ is full of grace. And in the future, I'm going to teach you how to have the, the spirit of Jesus on you so you can walk in humility and in grace, humbleness. And if you exalt your, and if you, if you humble yourself in the hand of God in due season, God will exalt you. All right? You need Jesus Christ. You need Jesus in your life. Ask Jesus to come into your heart. Just by saying these words, Jesus, come into my heart. I need you in my heart. I love you, Jesus. You're the real thing for me. Give me a new beginning. Give me a new life. Give me a new way. And I will follow your way. Not religion. Not what the church says but what the Word of God says. This book here, this handbook of life, which is a mirror. When I read this book, I see myself in it. I see my filth, and I see the righteousness that God has put inside of me. Man, and without it, I'm just a filthy rag. All right? I need this book. It's a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. It helps me breathe. It's the breath of life, praise the Lord. I'll have it no other way. But Jesus' way. All right? So you pray that prayer. Uh, there's two emails. Seeingtheimpossible at gmail.com. Write me there. Seeing the Impossible has an email. Seeingtheimpossible at gmail.com. Or you can write to me direct by Pastor Greg, two G's, Marilla, M O R I L L A, at gmail.com. I'll be more than happy to uh, uh, answer your uh uh, your uh, request, uh, as long as it's sound-minded. If it's not sound-minded, I'm not going to answer it, okay? I'm not going to debate with you, fight with you. If I want to fight, I'll go to the dojo, and I'll fight there. I'll go to the club. Plenty, plenty of, I can do plenty of fighting there, okay? Remember, Jesus love you. I love you because Jesus told me so. God bless you, and I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.